at, at, at uh, Herb would always have a Christmas party and Herb collected uh, model trains. Uh -huh. He had this huge setup uh, that he would get, uh, you know, get out the living room around the, uh, around the Christmas tree every year. Uh, uh, we had the test uh, train running around and it was, it was a blimp that was part of it. That was a little town. It was just, it was just a great little setup. He, he did a lot of miniature stuff. Uh, he, I went by his house uh, at his funeral, we went by his house afterward. And uh, it was kind of strange going into his studio. And, you know, you, you, you could tell that somebody was just in here working. You know, it was like, it was like just like you left it and you think about the history. Of it. But he had tons of, like, little action, I mean, not action, just little army men. Those, and those little tanks. Uh, left soldiers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, apparently he was working on uh, a model of uh, uh, some, some uh, Luftwaffe airplane that uh, some basic thing the Nazis were working on and, and uh, didn't uh, uh, actually build, but he was working on models of that. And, uh, and uh, I was talking to uh, Elliot Brown from uh, Mariola. And uh, Elliot, I guess, was involved with was working on a lot of plans and I, and I really didn't know that uh, her was into that it was apparently it was amazing at it. Yeah. And he uh, was very big on the planes at one time he had it. Yeah, oh, I know. I uh, I don't know if you ever saw it. I did a, a, a cutaway view of Marble on Park Avenue, uh, uh, 28th Street. And uh, everybody that was in Marble, the day I took pictures of her, had been caricatures of like tore off the top of the building and you could see everybody in it. And in the front of the hey Oh, oh they were, were announcing. Yeah, we're they're, they're, they're announcing one? Yeah, they're gonna announce it. Oh, okay. So uh, but we're just here, we're, we're just talking about her. And so uh, I, I drew in the front of the drawing is is uh, her flying by his bike my it's <laughs> prominently in the center of the, the drawing. Uh, so where are you guys at? Uh, we're just talking about Rambling, rambling about the first yeah. experiences of her. Or yeah. yeah. Well, we were talking about his airplane, in fact, and, oh. and uh, about right. the wrote models the names he was making. Yeah, I wrote the name down of what the plane actually was, so I don't forget it. Um, and I have to read something from, uh, 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 I think it was Sarah. Um, it was the, uh, I read it. Uh, oh, the PT-17 Stearman biplane. That's what it was. I just want to get it right. So, what, 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 what kind of plane? No, was? no, I was just like, I'm like, I just didn't realize they made biplanes during like, it was like World War II. Or well, something. that was that was actually uh, that that plane was made to, for, for t um, pilots to learn how to fly. Oh. Okay, and to train. Yeah, 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 yeah. And her, her love that stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah. That is, that is um, at his service afterwards. Remember, there was a picture there with him, and he had this. Like old time World War II cap on. Did you see that one? Uh, Let's just say yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> see how this works? Um, Everybody, by the way, this is, is Guy Dorian and Hi. Joe Stan. Yeah, Anyway, uh, so the uh, first experience of this of her uh, is our work. Uh, uh, first experience of First experience, well, my first experience with Herb's work was I got, I was working on Crazy Magazine doing movie parodies. Mm -hmm. uh, Crazy was like the, the mad ripoff that Marvel did. And I did the movie parodies. And, uh, well, they canceled the magazine, so I was SOL. I, I, I needed work, so they put me to work in the bullpen. And they said, oh, okay, now you're doing all the art direction for all the books. And they bring in a stack of pages like this. So I had to, if, like a panel would be change and some editorial change or somebody like poured coffee on a page or something like that I had to fix it. And I remember fixing Herb's paper, one of his pages, and like like looking at his stuff and just really admiring his drawing and stuff like that. And, and uh, I forget exactly what I had to do to a page, but I had to like surgically take something and put something else in there and draw it and stuff. And just remember trying to draw like him, you know, and trying to, to aid that style. And, remember liking his work and seeing that I was working for Larry Hama on G.I. Joe a lot and I remember seeing his work coming in on G.I. Joe. He did a lot of good stuff. By the way, 
the, the, what he's talking about fixing is not really like fixing, just adjusting certain things that editorial asks to be adjusted. Herb actually started out doing that stuff when he started out the same way. It's, I tell you, it's a great way to get into uh, um, comics. I, I remember sitting in the bullpen and, and uh, I really didn't know what I was doing. I was sitting next to Frank Giacoya and uh, which was like, ah, you know, and, and then uh, Vinnie Coletta would come over and, Another they, would, and they would go, no kid, don't do that, do this, you know, tell me what to do and stuff. And it was, it was like, wow, I was, I was in a really good place. I was really lucky. Um, well, I, like, like I said, I was inking for um, back toward the end of his run uh, on the hall. Uh, I had uh, a few herbs art from actually reading the book before that. And I have to admit, I wasn't that impressed with her work just reading the book. It, it took me a while to come to it. And I, I had been inking the Avengers, and then suddenly a, a, a issue of the Hulk showed up in the mail. I called in, and Len Wayne, who was editing, says, oh, I just decided you look good on her trimming. So <laughs> without, without warning, I was suddenly inking her. And that's when I realized how good he was. Because uh, when you are actually working on top of somebody's art and trying to understand what, and I did try to understand what pencilers were doing when I gave them, and Herb did things differently from other people, so, and I tried to match you know, how he ate his stuff. So I, he had, and he had a weird way of, uh, you know, there's, there's cross hatching for making grays. And Herb had a, kind of a, a thing I came to call basket hatching, where he would interlock uh, sections of matching. I did a lot of that with making his stuff. And just you know, going closely over his art, I realized you know, how good his storytelling was and his characterizations. Uh, he was told to be a Kirby imitator, and to my mind, he was never one of the better Kirby imitators because he, there was too much of his own own personality there. Yeah. Uh, but that was what he was told to do. And the really good art he was doing, um, I, I wish somebody would track down the original pages, but I didn't keep the copies. But on the back of the home pages, just to warm up, he was always doing these drawings of biplanes and all kinds of old airplanes. That was his passion. And that was, that was what he really wanted. If her had been allowed to do you know, what he really wanted to yeah. do, he would draw like Jack Davis and he would draw old airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> he loved, uh, and he loved that stuff. He loved Jack Davis' work. I, I think the first time that I, that I saw Herb's work was uh, on Hulk 121. And, um, I always liked the Hulk. You know, was a big Kirby, I you know all that stuff. Hulk was my favorite character. And so and I see this book and I was looking at it. And he used a lot of shots that he really liked doing shots that were were atmospheric. He loved drawing atmosphere. He loved drawing the wind in the air, and, and, and he loved drawing uh, big open shots. And, uh, and I saw and I saw some of this stuff in there and. and and I uh, wasn't sure about it at first, but then I looked at the book, and it had this character in it called the, the Glob. And it was just, yeah, the Glob, you remember the Glob? So the Glob was just this, like, weed-like character. Like, there's been done many different iterations of that type of a character. And he had roots on him and, and stuff. And it was just a cool thing. <coughs> Hulk was fighting him on the cover, and, and, and I, I couldn't even remember the cover, because I loved that book so much that I would keep it rolled up in my back pocket. That's the, way, that's the way, you know, when you're drawing all the time, I was a kid and I'm drawing all day long and just looking at this and I open this thing up. And the thing that was different about his stuff is that he always pulled back and gave us a master shot, a beautiful master shot. And and and, and I would see Hulk and Hulk was fighting this thing, I just couldn't get enough. I just couldn't get enough, just like I'm talking right now. I couldn't get enough of it. And I, I bought, I, I own several copies of it now. The last time I bought a copy was like two months ago, something like that, you know, because I'll keep buying them every time I see them. I've been creating a character in, in a book that I was just working with her. 
I created the character in there just just because her made something like that. And it's just this is awesome. And uh, um, that that got me hooked on her. That was years ago with Kirby and, and, and those guys and Gil Kane who was the master construction guy and Sema and South and Sema. But her once I saw that, that was the end of it because his hope whether uh, some people didn't like the way he moved the ball, some people did like it. Her like drawing other stuff, but he he was known as like the guy who did Wolverine. Or something. He wasn't really he didn't. I don't think he really considered himself, at least from what he told me, necessarily a superhero comic book artist. You know, he loved cartoons as a child, and he loved Disney and and and, and Disney comic book cartoons and comic strips and Jack Davis. I mean, that was his Mad thing. Magazine. Mad Magazine, yeah. you know? And, uh, you know, he liked drawing planes and all that stuff, but he drew the Hulk, you know? He went on the Hulk and he got that. He was only a bullpenner, like, kind of guy. He was doing stats. He was hired for $130 around the stack. They, they had big photo stat machines. You uh, fit maybe two in this room. And uh, that's what they used to uh, do the uh, pay stuff. If you bullpen when they uh, Photo stats are copies, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it, was, it wasn't just like, you know, you push a button on a machine. It was like, there was guys whose job it was full time to run the machines and stuff. And uh, so I, I, I had heard that recently. He started out as the stat guy. Yeah, $130 a week, which was actually good pay back then. And that was like, what, mid-60s? Yeah, yeah. And he, but he stayed, he, he wasn't doing it very long. Um, Brodsky hired him. Sal Brodsky hired him as, as, as an artist, um, full time. And, uh, they, so what, what was the first book he worked on? The, the first, I don't know the exact first stuff, the first stuff he worked on was a, uh, 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 was a Western. Western, Western stuff, I see this Western stuff. stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something like that, what, do you remember? Well, the very first stuff he did right out of school was doing background inks. For on Dell, in Dell yeah. Comics. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but then he went into, Vietnam, and then when he got back, yeah. when he went to Harvard, the first stuff he did was in the Western. Yeah, he was, he was, he was in the Air Force for four years. As an anchor, started as an anchor. Right, yeah, yeah. Brodsky hired him, right? And he said, he said he wished he would have stayed an anchor. <laughs> he wished what? Her wished he would have stayed an anchor. Well, then, you know, Joe uh, said that he was hired to ink him, and I, I love her thinking. I love her thinking, and, and I think you do a lot of similar stuff with with your inking, I heard it. Herb inked over uh, um, Jack Kirby on one of my favorite uh, uh, Silver Surfer issues, uh, issue 18 uh, with Jack Kirby. Now, uh, um, we have a Kirby board, and you know, everybody talks about Kirby's inkers and stuff like that. And Herb, when he, I, I, when he inks, man, that guy was good. He was really, I love this stuff. Yeah. Um, but I mean, did you guys talk about this? We went to SBA, we talked about that already. Went to School of Visual Arts for three years. Um, and, you know, he had, uh, um, and, uh, and didn't he, he went back to be, he had a master's degree later on in life, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, when he left Marvel, he went back and got a degree in teaching. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. He got a, a degree in teaching. Um, Is that what it was? Yeah. Um, he tried to get in at State University of New Paltz in their educational program, and, and they had so many restrictions. You told me. But there was another program that they gave uh, credits for life experience, and you get that for <laughs> yeah. And you, get, you, you, you wound up without, without as many uh, restrictions in uh, classes. And so Herb got his, his teaching oh, credit. There we go. That's yeah. the famous issue. Yeah. That's I mean, one. hey, and, and at some point, Jeff, if you could come up and tell the story about the yeah. Wolverine page. That's what I want. You were at the heart of that. That would be wonderful. Okay. And that Herb did say that, you know, he could have spent every bit of his life recreating that page every day if somebody wanted to buy it. Which he gave away. Well, we'll let yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll he, he, did, he did recreate this cover a lot, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He, he started recreating it, and he, he didn't particularly like drawing it. 
Yeah. So he kept raising the price. <laughs> 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 But they kept asking him to draw it. <laughs> you know, he, he, he never thought when he when he first started, he never thought he was like the, the greatest artist we we love him. But he never thought that, you know. And but what the thing about her was that that guy could tell a story. And that's what yeah. comics are about. Comics are about telling a story. And her can tell a story like nobody's business. I mean, the guy was great. And he would do he would work pretty quick. A lot of guys can't work like that anymore. He was one of those guys who could do three pages a day if he wanted to. And, and many times he did. And it was, it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. I, uh, I would love it if you would tell that story. That would be great. Uh, I, this is Jeff Jaworski. Okay, Jeff, can you yeah, even just on. to tell the story, Jeff? Uh, I'll sit over here. No, no, grab another chair. Yeah, come on. Well, go ahead and sit over here. Yeah, come on. Grab another one. Sorry. Very few people 
people in the hobby that would have given away most of the proceeds. So, I remember the, the day of the uh, uh, auction, I was in Montreal at a Comic Con, and my phone rings and it was you. And he, and he got up and he says, I'm at the auction, the page just sold, and uh, he told me how much, and I'm sitting there and I'm sitting right across from Bob Layton and Neil Adams. And I go, I can't wait, so I ran over and told him. <laughs> I told everybody in the building. Uh, and everybody was like, wow! I got, I got to be the deliverer of the good news. And so, uh, uh, the last time we saw uh, Herbert Patricia was at the con, the day before. We were, I was sitting next to Patricia, talking to her, and I, and I said that, I told her the story of you calling me at, at uh, in Montreal to tell me that, that like, so I said, well, Jeff, as soon as it sold, he called and told me about it. And she goes, oh, that pisses me off. He was supposed to call me first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, it was a good story. It was really fun. Well, the thing is, is, is the perk was very hands-off as far as the auction goes and, and wanting to help. You know, he took a couple of pictures with a, a copy of the page, uh, and he, he gave a quote. And uh, Roy gave a very detailed quote. For the, the auction, that's kind of close for you. Yeah, yeah. And, but he did it because he's on the board of Hero, and he yeah. knew that, that that's where it was going to go. And um, it was for sale online for about a month before it actually went to the live part of the auction. And on the first day, it went to 125 grand or something. And then at that point, Herb really got into it. And he got really excited. He's like, all right, what can I do to help promote it? So he ended up doing an interview with the PDC on the Zoom. Wow. Do you think that might have had an influence on the bidding? No, because the, the person that ultimately ended up buying it, you know, I, my thought was maybe some sports figure who had money to piss away and make it would be cool to put on the wall. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, the guy that bought it is a collector and a dealer that lives down in the DC area. Oh, okay. Um, and he just said, you know, he, he has it posted on his comic art fans gallery and he says, you know, my wife decided. Uh, so I'm going to go sit back down. The last thing I'll say before I go is this book just came out about three or four weeks ago. And I went to press before her passed away, but it was nice with his full support and, and help. And there's lots of great behind the scenes. Photos, and stuff in here. So if you're a Herb fan, go ahead and buy this. Yeah. Well, there was no other way to say Tomorrow's yeah. publishing is publishing. Tomorrow's very, very good publishing. Yeah, cool, cool. Is, is, that, so, for uh, sale? is that for sale now? Or? It's out. I don't know if it's here, but okay. it's out. You can get it on the Tomorrow's site. Oh, right, the, the, the book, the, the, for this first story, it was the King Cult. That's what it was. It was Kim Cole. Kim Cole. Yeah. Name Zinke, right? Uh, or the first one that he passed. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the first one he passed. Yeah, I think. Yeah, well, I, I was looking through the book and looking at the artwork, and you can clearly see that, that he's trying to do Kirby there. Yeah. And, and, well, and there's, I, I was talking to him a few months ago. It's, we've been working together recently. I've known her for years, you know. Um, and every year we got we, we would get a little bit you know, closer. I know Patricia. I knew Patricia better than I knew her because I was always too afraid to talk to her. That, you, know, that's, you know, he would he traded artwork with me at conventions, and we sat down next to each other about five times at shows. So all weekend, so you get to know somebody when you're sitting, you know, right next to them talking. So we would keep in contact and stuff like that. But I mean, um, uh, yeah, he was the nicest guy in the world. So, well, I mean, you know, there's. He, he, he was like, hey, what are you doing? And, you know, and he would show me his stuff, and I'd say, oh, I like that. And he goes, oh, well, it's this much money. I'll give it to you for half. And I was like, oh, no, okay, I'll take it. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
and then I, I, he'd say, oh, what do you got there? Well, I'm drawing, drawing a Wolverine. I see you have you know, another Hulk there, you know, because I'll take any Hulk forever that he drew. He had this one of Hulk ripping apart his shirt, belts flying everywhere. I was like, wow, that's incredible. I'm drawing this Wolverine thing over here, you know. Like, oh, what? He said, oh, well, did you want to trade? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. So we traded it, and I was like, oh man, I got the better end of the deal. <laughs> There's no way. You know, it's definitely, you know. But uh, um, her and Patricia were always very, very nice to me. I mean, they're just good people. And, and her was the nicest guy. His favorite artist, he told me uh, when we were talking on the phone, just like a lot of guys I'm talking to on the phone. Mike Lawyer and a lot of guys, and uh, Jack Kirby. He said, he said of all the people, his favorite artist was Jack Kirby. Yeah. You know, and I thought it would be. You know, I thought it'd be like Jack Davis. He said his favorite artist was Jack Kirby. Yeah. He said Jack was the the thing he loved about Jack was his storytelling, and that's what Kirby did. He told stories. That was his yeah. favorite thing. And he said Jack was his favorite. And, and I don't know, maybe and they told him else. Him, you know, of all the guys, um, and that he admired Jack, you know, and, and I like that, because I'm, every, everyone knows that I'm like, I'm so big on Jack. Were, were he and Jack close, do you think? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that there was any, like, you know, closeness or anything like that that I know of. Yeah. You know? But, uh, I mean, i tell you what, I just wish that he did more than he did over Jack, because he was so good at it. And, and Joe, you you were pretty good friends with her, right? Yeah. And, and you knew him for like yeah. the, like the sixties. Like when did you find him first meet him? Well, I first met him in, in the eighties, and then in the last fifteen years or so, he's been living closer, uh -huh. closer to us. Your um, neighbors. Yeah, basically he's, he was a neighbor on the other side of town. Uh -huh. And you know, you, you just you know hang out with him. For a while, Kirk Herb spent some time in the Puppets on point. So one of my, my best uh, afternoons one time was Herb explaining to me the sport of cricket. Uh, <laughs> and, and Herb was a big sports guy. And he loved baseball. He loved big baseball. And I, I think he may be the only American who actually understands cricket. <laughs> 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 he just really got into it. And when you're with somebody who cares about something and is really talking about it, you know, it, it makes an impression. And, and there was a time, well, one of my favorite group stories is maybe 2004, 2003. I mean, we had a, a big uh, party, uh, open house in our house for the Museum of Comics, uh, OCA, uh, Comics and Art. It's now part of Society of Illustrators. Uh, and because it was, a, a, we had like a hundred people in the house, and because it was a comics gathering, we had uh, Hulk uh, towels and you know, washcloths in, in the bathroom, and, and it was drawings that Herb had done. And after the party, we found out that Herb had signed. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he blew his nose in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, wow. It, it just, you know, it just, you know, had a sense of humor. And didn't mention it? No. You just noticed it. That's fine. I had an old duck, the old duck bicycle I found somewhere that I heard and saw. I think something like that. Probably loved it. He liked, uh, you know, he liked fixing stuff. Yeah. He liked that. And he had, you know, he said, one of the days I'm going to come over picture of your Donald Duck bicycle and you never quite got it done. Oh, oh. he's doing the models. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Herb had all these uh, soldiers and, and Civil War soldiers and things like that, all kinds of stuff like that all set up in his house. And downstairs in the basement, oh, there's like, like a, a man cave. Yeah, yeah, it's a man cave full of just all kinds of stuff. Like they had little models and everything. The Herb Trimby was like really smart guy. He was, he was a meticulous type of guy. Um, I mean, when, when he did, like I was saying about the scenes that he would draw, he, he was meticulous down to like every little thing going on, the little trees and stuff <laughs> like that. 
you know, it's like almost like I've been thinking him lately, and I was thinking him on his last, uh, some of his last stuff. And his, he sent me his one page, and it was a panel, a, 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 a bottom panel, and it was a character standing over, he's looking over the cliff, and there's this scene with the, with the clouds and the wind and the, the atmosphere, and then everything down to the ground and the trees, and there's like little grass down. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to eat that little grass. And I said, like, and I'm like, Herb, I called him up and I'm like, Herb, you think you could have put more detail in this? So what is it? And, it, and, and he just noodled it, and it, but it was beautiful. Nobody else that I... I it, was not, it was not noodling for the sake of noodling. No. Like, that it, would be because what it needed to be big and strong and wise. And then yeah. it didn't get the way then. But, right. But when he had a big picture, you know. Yeah, he really, he didn't, he didn't shy away from putting everything in there. And, and that was one of the great things about his storytelling, you know. He, 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 he knew when to do a shot close and far away and what told him the story and, and how to make the pacing of the story go well. And, 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 and all that stuff, you know. We, we did a, uh, a home story about the Loch Ness Monster, one of my favorites. And there were, you know, long shots of Loch Ness with the, the castles and all the Scottish scenery. You know, you, you, could, you could believe it. It was, it was all there. Yeah, it was always believable. He did he did a, a bunch of stuff. He, he also did product stuff and, and, and uh, a lot with, uh, like characters like Godzilla, okay. There was a what was it? Eight, eight, seventies. I'm too old. Seventies. Seventies. I'm thinking maybe it was the eighties. I'm hoping, but no. Like same time as Shogun Warriors. Yeah, Shogun Warriors. I don't know if it, you guys know, but I mean, he was good with robots. He was good with dinosaurs. He was good with monsters. He was good with his Godzilla series. I loved it. I mean. He wasn't, you know, he would really get there and do shots of Godzilla's giant foot coming at you. And, you know, there was one issue, I don't remember what it was, with, uh, um, where he was, uh, Godzilla was shrunk down. Yes. Remember the issue there?